Hebrews chapter 10. And also one verse out of chapter 11. I enjoyed the choir. It was the many, many form of the choir, but uh, it sounded like they have a story and they have a song. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. The writer says, cast not away, therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after, that after, after, you have done the will of God. You might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. The next chapter, 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I got several topics and I don't know which one to use. Verse 36, chapter 10 says, for you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might have, you might receive the promise after you have done the will of God. I thought about preaching, there is a praise after this. And, uh, uh, and then, but without faith, it's impossible uh, to please God. So I'm going to preach something. All right, y'all, you may be seated. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, the book of Hebrews is one of the many books in the Bible that seeks to the child of God. And, and we can see this in verse 36 of Hebrews chapter 10, where the Bible tells us we have need of patience, that after we have done the will of God, we might receive the promise. 
And so this being true, we can better understand the purpose of suffering, which is to prepare us and mature us to a place where the proof that we can handle the promise is seen, is seen, is seen, is seen, is seen. And so all this being true, I have some competition on the front row. We can better understand the purpose. I want you to hear me. We can better understand the purpose of suffering, which is to prepare us and to mature us to a place where the proof that we can handle the promise is seen in the praise we give to him while we are still in problem. We are a people of faith and we refuse to defer our shout of victory until after the battle because we already know how the outcome will be and that's why praise from the child of God is always in order at any time. For us, it's hallelujah anyhow. I'll never let this problem get me down. But when life's problems come my way, I'll lift my head up high and say, hallelujah anyhow. And knowing this and doing this produces growth in our relationship with God. And so the writer here encourages us not to back away from the devil when he is trying our belief in God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that we are to resist the devil and make him flee because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Our job is to remain strong against the forces of hell so as not to be affected or harmed by an enemy who is already defeated. And when we do, it's a public proclamation and demonstration that our belief is genuine. Understand that when you exercise your faith in the tough times, rather than giving in to fear and, and, and frustration, which is easier uh, a thing, it's an easier thing to do, you not only show that you are resting in what Christ has done for you in the past, but it also means you refuse to lose hope for your future. My brothers and sisters, your destiny, your destiny is far too important for you to live outside your identity. Uh, it's important and even critical to your faith that you refuse to allow some mistake in your life to define who you are for the rest of your life. You are not a mistake because you've made a mistake. You, so your identity is not with the fearful and the unbelieving. Your identity is not with uh, defeat or with failure or with the losers. The quality of your faith the high level of your belief, the value of your character is what makes you different from others. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation. You are God's own special people 
who are to proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. And I do believe this is one of the reasons Apostle Paul writes to us in Romans 8, beginning with verse 18, where he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. In, in a nutshell, and in, in plain English, what the apostle is saying to us is, at the end of the day, there will be a praise after all the hell you've had to endure. And so I would have you to understand that faith involves a concept of future events or future outcomes. In other words, there would be no need for faith if I already knew when and where and how everything was going to work out. And this is illustrated in the life of Abraham who heard God before he believed God. In Genesis chapter 12 beginning with verse number 1 uh, the Lord says to Abraham get out of your country. Get, get away from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And so for Abraham to leave a place of safety and a place of security that's well established is more than a notion or some personal inclination of the intellect. Abraham moved because he heard a word from the Lord. Understand clearly that the faith of Abraham was different than the faith required of us. And, and this difference is Abraham had no evidence or argument that could establish the truth of God's faithfulness, but we do. Abraham had no Bible. Abraham had no scriptures, no examples of how God works in the lives of his people, but we do. We know, we know from the scriptures that regardless of how dark it is now, the Bible tells us there is a brighter day coming. It's written in our Bibles, it's written for us. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. It's written in our Bibles. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. And lo, I am with you all the ways, even to the end of the world. It is written for us. There the wicked shall cease from troubling. There the weary shall be at rest. It is written for us. If you suffer, you shall also reign with him. But, but for Abraham, there was no written word designed to illustrate the rewards of allegiance and obedience to God. Abraham simply heard a word from God saying leave and the Bible says Abraham departed. My brothers and sisters in order to reach your destiny and fulfill your purpose may mean you have to leave some stuff and you can't take everybody to where God is taking you. You, you may have to cut some ties with some folks and some things that are delaying your blessing. But I'm here to tell somebody the sacrifice cannot be compared with the promises of God. But 
before this can actuate and operate in your life effectively there must be a word from God that you hear and then without a hesitation move in obedience and in faith but remember the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. All I'm saying is we got to hear a word from the Lord. And somebody up in here ought to shout right now, Lord give us an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Because, because, because what happens to me and for me in the future depends on it. Faith in God is the power that controls what happens in my future. And it was the songwriter who said, I will trust in the Lord. And it was the wise man Solomon who told us in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path and when we do this we are anointed and appointed to speak those things that are not as though they were faith gives you the ability to declare and to decree your happiness even in a bad situation faith authorizes you to command strength in times of weakness and joy in times of sorrow and peace that surpasses all understanding faith is empowering you can speak to demons and devils you can speak to anxiety and fear to leave your house and to leave you alone but it all depends upon your faith your confidence and your conviction that God is always in control he is always in command and he never has to ask for permission because his sovereignty is always in charge he can make no mistakes and there are no accidents in him our God is a God of intent if it happens to you God intended it to happen to you it's his design and his purpose because that's the way he intended it to happen there are no serendipities there are no happy chance discoveries in Christ our God is a God of purpose and that's the reason the Bible tells us in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you we can do that because the God we trust is omnipotent the God we trust is omniscient and omnipresent he knows no weaknesses the God that we serve knows no failures he has no frailties he has no infirmities he's always effective the God that we serve is always useful his power cannot be resisted and that's the reason the negative facts of your life can never invalidate the faith of your life your pain of today does not change God's intent for your tomorrow because whatever it is this too will pass the Bible puts it like this all things work together for good to them that love God 
and to them who are called according to his purpose because I love God and I'm called according to his purpose this challenge this problem this pain this disappointment this burden these tears this sorrow is working is active is functioning is operating for my good bump somebody and tell them it's all good it's all good even the darkness even the darkness he'll make a light before me whatever is wrong he'll make it right before me and he told me all my battles I will fight before thee and the high places I'll bring down with an everlasting love I'll love thee and through trials great and sore I'll prove thee bump somebody one more time and tell them this test is just proving me this test is just correcting me it's proving the quality of my faith it's proving my ability it's validating my belief that God specializes in things that are impossible and he will do what no other power can do it's documenting it's documenting there's nothing that can shake or move me because the high places God will bring down and so when I walk when I walk when I walk by the way he'll lead me on the fact of the land he'll feed me in a mansion in the sky he'll deed me in the high places God will bring down somebody up in here ought to shout it's coming down y'all ain't saying nothing you ought to shout it's coming down you ought to shout one more time it's it's coming down the fear is coming down the worry the stress the trouble the problems the hurt the pain God will come on and shout God will God will bring them down so then thank you brother my watch me God will God will God will bring them down so then if God will I will look at your neighbor and say no 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 talk to three people let me find one and say neighbor if God will I will y'all ain't saying it right your neighbor say neighbor if God will I will if God will I will if God will I will and this is what I will I will bless the Lord and all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth in the rain there's a praise through a heartache and pain there's a praise my soul shall make her boast in the Lord the humble shall hear it and be glad magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together the writer said I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble and then he went on to say whoa taste and see Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, you don't have to take my word for it. Taste and see for yourself that the Lord is good and blessed is the man that 
push his trust in him and today and forever I'm going to trust him shake somebody's head and say neighbor I will trust in the Lord until I die I'm going to trust him his love I trust his mercy I trust his grace I trust his favor I trust his kindness I trust his peace his power his protection his provision I trust his joy I trust I get joy when I think about what he's done for me I get excited I get happy I celebrate because I'm blessed in the city I'm blessed in the field I'm blessed when I come and when I go touch your neighbor say neighbor and late in the midnight hour God is going to turn up Your neighbor say neighbor late in the midnight hour God is gonna turn some things around and make it work in my favor touch your neighbor say neighbor it's got to happen because I am blessed Catch your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you knew my story, you'd understand.